I didn't grow up as a kid thinking I was going to be a business owner. And Shane is in the dental industry with me. So I don't very often get to talk through dental marketing stuff. And I know it sounds super nerdy, but there is an actual industry of people who just work with dentists. And I've, I love it. I've gotten stuck in it and I didn't realize what I was getting into. And now we've, we've uh, come a long way. And Shane, I know you're in the same position and I'm excited to talk through today what you do. But in short, what I want to just try to do is kind of say what I think your agency does for the dentist and you tell me what I got right, what I got wrong and uh, where, what I might've left out. So you guys are a marketing agency. You work with dentists and you help those dentists generate more new patients for their office. And you manage all of, I think all of their digital as well as other forms of marketing as well where needed. What, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? Yeah, I mean that's pretty much uh, exactly it. You know, we're you know uh, primarily a digital marketing you know company, so we do website design, uh, website you know management, and then we also uh, we have crews that go out and do like content day sessions with photos and videos, and we implement all of that into the website, uh, and that's a really big you know part of our overall strategy. And then aside from that, you know, it's the SEO, the Google Ads, the social media ads management, uh, those primarily. And then we also help support some of like the material that they may use like in their ground marketing efforts or in their internal marketing in the office. You know, we'll have our design team put something together. But that's kind of in a nutshell, um, you know, our service offering. That's awesome. How did you get into dental? You know, it's it's funny. We I You probably get asked this all the time too. <laughs> but I had a, uh, my dentist who's also, you know, a friend, uh, had purchased a practice from a doctor who had it for 30 years, didn't even have a website, right? It was no marketing or anything like that. And I had the marketing uh, background in, in uh, journalism and then later on into a marketing career. And so he just kind of asked me like, hey, you know, could you maybe help me out with some of the marketing? Here's the, some of the things that we need to do for the practice. And I kind of was just like, you know, sure, why not? It's just something different and kind of a little side hustle. And really, you know, enjoyed it um, because I was able to blend a lot of like the storytelling that I was able to learn, like from my journalism days, blend that into the dental industry. And I realized really quickly that there wasn't a lot of that happening at that time. Mm -hmm. And so he ended up referring me to one of his friends who had worked at a corporate <laughs> office with him who had a startup. And then that person referred. And then I had like four clients. I was still working a full time, you know, job. Yeah. And at like four clients, I had replaced my monthly income for my full time job, where That's I was awesome. working, you know, twenty hours doing the side hustle a week and forty hours a week working the thing. I was like, there may be something here. And then the kind of the rest is is history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was going to actually ask you how you started your agency, because I think that's where a lot of people struggle, right? So there's a lot of people out there who have a skill set, or they learn a skill set at their job, and they're really not equipped to be at a job, right? They're, it's not the place for them. At least that's how I felt. Uh, and I didn't really understand what being an entrepreneur was. I just knew that I got bored every year and changed jobs. So when did you figure out like, hey, this is or how did you figure out like, I need to be an entrepreneur and I need to be over here doing this rather than going the safe route? Was it when you got to that monetary safety net or was there something else that triggered that? Yeah, you know, so I was kind of in the same boat as you, Gary, where I had been at this job for only a year. And don't get me wrong, like it wasn't like I hated this marketing job, like it was a nice job. Um, I was comfortable, which a lot of times is a, is a bad thing in the big grand scheme of things, but I, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed my boss and everything. But I realized at that point, only a year in, I was already bored. And this is a trend that was happening. And people would always tell me, like, you change jobs too often. And I was yeah. like, I know, I just, I get so bored. And so I never, entrepreneurism never even crossed my mind. But then once I was just, you know, helping my friend out and then I you know, had a couple of clients, I was like, okay, wait a minute, like, there's a whole new world here. And so I had actually ran across a guy uh, locally who was doing something similar, but in a different niche. And I saw like how he had his team built out and how he like, I don't know, had was working on like building just like a company culture and all of these things. And I was like, why can't I do that? Like maybe mm. that's the answer. Maybe, you know, every place that I've worked, there's a reason that I want to switch jobs and, and always be like changing it up. And so that's kind of how it happened. I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs. I didn't grow up as a kid thinking I was going to be a business owner. Like none of that was on my radar. It just kind of happened accidentally once I realized 
the freedom that I could create for myself and for my family, but then also how I had creative control over you know what we were doing for those offices. And that was honestly the most thrilling part for me was not having someone kind of looking over your shoulder being like, no, we can't do this, we can't do this. It was just more of like, hey, make it happen. And I like yeah. that.